Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe below so we can expand our Squatch search with your help. Report number 49238 Class Alpha State Alabama Observed it was July 5th, 2015. It was late about 3.30 a.m. I had fallen asleep on my cousin's sofa about 10 p.m. after a long day at our family reunion. All of a sudden, the dog started going crazy. It woke me up, so I kind of laid there thinking to myself, I wish they would shut up. Then, all of a sudden, I heard one of the dogs yell out like it was hurt. Then I heard the sound of something coming up on the front porch, so I set up to look out the front window. It just so happens that we left the porch light on, and what I saw was unforgettable and unbelievable. It was squatting down right in front of me. I guess it was too big to stand straight up on the porch. I don't know why it was there, but we had left the empty beer and soda cans and leftover food scraps and a couple of trash bags to be thrown out the next day. But to make a long story short, I was no more than 8 to 10 feet away from it. I looked at for what seemed like an hour, but I never saw its face because its, its back was to me the whole time, and I never leave my 45 cal, but for some reason I did not have it with me. If I had, you would have had a corpse to show to the world, but this thing has become aggressive in this area of Alabama where my family lives. July 8th, it kills my cousin's bulldog. In May, it chases another family member. June, it looks into a family member's window in broad, open daytime. So I am trying to get some of the guys together and try and kill it because no one will do anything to research and capture this thing. We know where it lives and how it travels. All we want is for someone to capture and remove it. I live in Texas, but my family lives in Alabama and they are living in fear of this thing, so it has to go one way or another. Also noticed, it's starting to kill the family pets and chase people. Other witnesses, yes, lots of them. Other stories, yes, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Time and conditions, 3.30 a.m., 4 a.m.-ish. Environment, dense woods and homes. Follow-up investigation report by BFRO investigator Mike Brumfield. I spoke with a witness over the phone. Later, I met with several of his relatives and did video interviews. The witness had been at a family reunion. They had gathered all the trash and food scraps into trash bags on the front porch, 15 by 15 by 9. The trash consisted of ribs, chicken, burgers, and drink cans, etc. Around 3.30 a.m. on July 5, 2015, the witness was sleeping on the couch right next to the porch. His cousin L. was sleeping in the bedroom down the hall from the porch. The cousin heard it coming as she had seen and heard it before. Cousin L. stated she just laid quietly in her bed thinking, I told him about this thing and he just laughed. So who's laughing now? She had heard it approach before and was waiting for the brother's reaction. The dog that yelped was a small dog at the back of the mobile home. Evidently it yelped when Cousin L. picked the dog up and put it in bed with her. The dog being killed that was mentioned was a cousin's dog at a different location, not sure what could have killed it. The witness stated that all the yipping little house dogs suddenly stopped their barking and went quiet. He then heard and felt the front porch groan. He sat up and cracked the blinds to see what was going on. He saw a Sasquatch come up to the porch, duck under the roof, sit down and start rummaging through the trash bags. They had left the porch light on, a 60 watt bulb, so very good visibility. As he watched this creature digging through the bags, it didn't even get up to reach other bags. The arms were thought to be four to five feet long, the fingers were described like snicker bars with fingernails, and the head was shaped like the back of Darth Vader's helmet. 
The hair was about four to five inches long. The hair was colored dark brown with a hint of red. The entire back was very muscular. The feet were estimated to be at least 16 inches long and very broad. After doing some measurements, it would appear the Sasquatch was about eight and a half feet tall and maybe 800 pounds. It had a very bad smell like cheese gone bad. The Sasquatch never did turn to where the witness could see the face. The witness was too scared to move. He's not sure how long the creature was there. He is sure it was at least 20 minutes. His cell phone was on a charger across the room. He didn't want to move and scare it away. When it was done, it just took a leap to the ground and strode off through the yard across a 30-foot road in two strides, down a ravine, and was gone. During my visit, I was shown what appears to be finger and handprints on the trailer. The fingers start at the far left side of the trailer, with the fingers closed together. And as the Sasquatch walked toward the porch, the fingers began to open until at the bedroom window, it became a smudge of a handprint. The fingers and handprint were at least twice the size of mine. The handprint was smudged like it had been looking in the window and was trying for a better view. There is a long history of sightings in the area. It's a sparsely populated area with just a few homes that are usually close together. There were more stories, but those witnesses couldn't make it the day I was there. Other stories from the family include a cousin being observed as he stood next to his truck on a rural road, a close encounter by two other cousins after almost hitting one as it entered that road in front of their vehicle, and another incident involving a young family member being chased as she delivered plates of food to her grandparents who lived nearby. Regarding the wish to kill something, I explained that we have never received a report where a Bigfoot hurt anybody. That they all have their own personalities and more likely there isn't just one in the area. I suggested that they may not take lightly to one of theirs getting shot. The folks living there who had close encounters realized at how much they look like humans and they really couldn't kill any of them. One of the children attempted to take a photo of a Sasquatch from 200 yards. Here is the photo. Unfortunately, it is blurry and little detail is seen. There is no doubt in my mind this was a real encounter. I know the area, and if I were a Sasquatch, that's where I would live. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe below so we can expand our Squatch search with your help. If you do have an encounter to tell, send to SoCal Sasquatch Organization at gmail.com. We now have SCSO Keep On Squatchin' t-shirts available. See link in description below. Join the community and show it off wherever you go.